of the things about being a YouTuber is that you get asked this one question all the time. How do you, you get make good on YouTube videos? I don't know where to start. I have your biggest head. Yeah, 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 Anyways, I usually try to answer those questions as much as I can, but the response can be pretty similar, and that response is... Just do it! Do you think that I knew exactly what I was doing when I first started my YouTube channel? No! Just look at all of these amazing Let's Plays that you could watch! Wow, what a value! Disclaimer, not actually value! I actually used to make a lot of different Let's Plays, and one of the games that I used to play was this one called Dungeon Defenders. And one of the reasons that I'm mentioning that right now is because we're taking a look at Dungeon Defenders 2. Now the original Dungeon Defenders came out back in 2011. You would essentially pick from four different classes, level them up, and then defend these things called Eternia Crystals from waves and waves of enemies. Like I just mentioned, I used to make videos on this very game. Hey guys, and welcome to Dungeon Defenders. This is SH, and I brought some- Ugh, get a new mic, scrub! Sometimes it physically hurts to go and watch something you used to do. You just gotta embrace it! Alright, I'm ready. I'm so ready. Oh god, there's so many! Oh no, I'm gonna die! So am I, me. So am I. But who knows, I must have been doing something right because they asked me to look at Dungeon Defenders 2. Okay, let's look at it with our eyes. The story begins by recapping the first game, telling us all about how they succeeded in defeating the old ones. Uh-oh, spoilers. I mean, I guess you, you could have realized that because this is the, the second one. This is the second game. Turn your crystals, something, something bad guys. And now our heroes are back in business, ready to fight waves and waves of enemies. Because tower defense! So let's dive in and actually talk about what Dungeon Defenders 2 is. At its core, it's a tower defense game, but it's also a role-playing game. You can choose from four different characters, go around and play a bunch of different scenarios, and level them up. Each class is drastically different than any other, and they all have unique playstyles. The wizard is more of a standard beginner's class that has basic towers and long-range attacks and spells. The knight is all about getting up close and personal, doing physical attacks, and putting up walls. The huntress is all about laying a bunch of traps down and then shooting things from a long range. And then you have the monk, who is Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender. One of the best and strongest parts to this game is getting a group of friends together that all have a different class. Because each class plays so differently and has very distinct abilities, you'll have all these different tools at your disposal for taking care of all the baddies. It's actually really engaging to try to find the best defense setup possible, but that's way easier said than done because there's all kinds of branching pathways in each map. And even in some cases where your defenses are lost, the level actually gets harder, so you kinda have to be on your game and take your time during the different phases. Luckily, there is a building phase before you face off against each wave of enemies, so you do, in essence, have as much time as you need to set up the perfect defense. I ended up going with the mage because, well, it told me to, and also because I want to live out my wildest Gandalf fantasies. Hello, it is I, the Gand Man. You shall not get past my defenses of tow my tower defense. Okay, so you start off the game in this tutorial and it teaches you how to play. The beginning of the game is actually ridiculously easy and there isn't very much action. Oh my god, everybody take it easy! There's so much action going on, there's just one gobbo! Oh, it never mind, it was easy. So you beat the tutorial and continue on! Yay! Oh, wait, wait, who's that? There's just a kid up there watching me? I don't trust him. Why don't you get down here and defend towers like a man? I mean, I mean, I was like freaking 10 in the first game. This should be no problem for you. I mean, you're probably already more useful than the guy who forgot to wear, wear stupid pants. So after you win a level, you get a randomized chest of loot. Oh, right. I forgot to mention there's lots of looting. Like, lots of looting. In fact, this game is extremely stat heavy, so you're gonna be looting new things all the time. It might be a little overwhelming at first, but you get used to it. Between doing all the different defense levels, you're gonna spend a lot of time here at the tavern. There's not a ton of things to do at the very beginning of the game because you have to unlock everything. But I did find this guy named the Stubborn Old Man, and I can tell you from experience that he is indeed very stubborn. I also liked tricking people into thinking that they killed me. It was fun. She thinks she got me, but she totally did it. Now, if there's one thing that I could praise the developers for, it's the game's aesthetic style. The game's look is very well defined, it almost has this fairy tale like wonder to it. It's a graphical style that really seems like it would stand the test of time. I mean, there were moments when I was playing this game where I was just looking around and blown away by how great it looked. Oh man, look at that. It's so beautiful. I'm gonna live there. So we keep playing the game and unlocking new things, which doesn't take very long. Each campaign level can be played with random people online or your friends. 
Here's a person named Spaghetti. That's all. Spaghetti. Playing with other people is preferably the way to go because one, it's an MMO, and two, it's hard to do things by yourself. Nice walls, wall. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> There's just like a line of walls over here. It's not. A... Did it work? I mean, I guess they're distracted. Yes. So in that sense, you succeeded completely. After spending a lot of time in the main campaign, you start to unlock more and more things outside in the tavern. There's shops and different things where you can buy items to upgrade your character, skill slots which you can customize with different badges that affect the way your character is played, and eventually, after beating the main campaign, pets, which you can hatch in a hatchery and upgrade and evolve over time. My pet's called the Cat Hatter. Do you get it? Do you get the reference? At the time of recording this voiceover, I have about 17 hours in the game. Which is probably the amount of time you'd expect to get out of the game just to complete the main campaign. I mean, the fact that the level cap is 50 and there's a lot of different modes and difficulty levels that unlock after you complete the campaign means that you could probably quadruple that number easily. The only thing that I feel obligated to mention is that there's going to be microtransactions in the game, which I am usually not a fan of. But I did verify that it was all aesthetic and none of it actually affects the gameplay. Which, from experience, I know to be very solid. So if you're looking for a new fantasy RPG, you could always try out Dungeon Defenders 2. The game is going free to play soon and there's a lot of content there, so it's probably worth checking out. In the meantime though, let's check back in on the stubborn old man. Oh yeah, just look at him, he's still stubborn. He nailed it. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked it and you want to support the show, then click the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. You should also follow me on Facebook and Twitter if you want to get notified as to when I upload a new video, or just to hear me talk about stuff. And if you just can't wait for more videos, got two more videos for you right there. One of them is an LP of Dungeon Defenders 2, and the other one is on top 10 exploits in video games. That's it for me this time, guys. As always, I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.